Hello and uh, welcome all of you. So let's uh, uh, begin with our next session. As uh, last time you have started with the uh, unit number six, and our unit number six name is the code optimization, and uh, related topic that is nothing but our uh, fifth phase of compiler, uh, which comes in the synthesis phase and in the back end of the compiler. now last time we have discussed about uh, what exactly is the code optimization what is the need of the code optimization and uh, what are the different techniques uh, uh, using which the code optimization can be done and uh, so these all the things as well as the advantage of doing the code optimization these things already we have discussed in the previous lecture and also we have discussed uh, on which code we do the optimization so generally uh the code optimization phase receive the input from its previous phase that is the intermediate code and uh, so the code optimizer take that intermediate code and uh, try to modify that code try to rearrange that code uh, try to remove the some unwanted code from that uh, uh, try to remove the redundant code so all these techniques uh, all these things being done by the compiler with the help of different techniques and the code get optimized okay so in the today's part we are going to discuss the things about the what exactly is the basic block and what is the flow graph okay these two are the important techniques here so that today we will discuss and uh, why we required it uh, that in the upcoming lectures we will understand that so today we will just focus on what exactly is the basic block and what is the flow graph okay uh, in the compiler design okay so uh, first we'll discuss about what is exactly is the uh, basic block is and then we'll discuss the flow graph with example these things we'll discuss now uh, you can see the i think last time also in one lecture i told you what exactly is the basic block so if you take the general meaning of block block is nothing but certain sequence of uh, code or certain sequence of statement so same is the thing here uh, here you can read the basic block is the sequence of consecutive statement now this word consecutive is very important here what basic block is a sequence of consecutive statements consecutive statements means uh, the continuous state one one uh, one after the another statements are there that statements are referred as a consecutive statement continuous statements are there okay so basic block is a sequence of consecutive statement which are which are always executed in the sequence without any halt or without any branching so that particular sequence of consecutive statements is called as what is called as a basic block so once again you read the definition carefully and then we apply the definition to the example so that you get the clear idea so basic block is what sequence of consecutive statement which are always get executed in the which are always get executed in the sequence without any halting or without any jumping or without any branching understood that particular sequence of consecutive statements is called as what the particular basic block understood so in another words i have mentioned when the first instruction is executed all the instruction in the same basic block will be executed in their sequence of appearance without losing the flow of control of the program means suppose let's take the example here this is the statement if you return a is equal to b plus c plus d now if you write the three address code for this as a intermediate code then we'll get the three address code as like this as a intermediate code and you know the uh, yeah, now suppose now can you call this particular uh, sequence of statements as a basic block okay yes we can call this sequence of consecutive statement as a basic block because if you read this uh, second description when the first instruction is executed means when this instruction will be executed then after that this instruction will get executed after a second the third instruction will be get executed means starting from this first then second will execute and then the third so when the same thing i have mentioned when the first instruction is executed all the instruction in same basic block will execute it in their sequence of appearance without losing the flow of control of the program so basic block is sequence of consecutive statement 
which are always executed in the sequence so these are so this these particular three statements are considered as a sequence of consecutive statements why they are being called as a sequence of consecutive statement and why they will be get executed in the sequence because if you see after this statement there is a next statement is that this one day because is now suppose after the first statement after the first statement if there is a particular another statement like go to go to 3 suppose this is a first then this is a second okay and this is a third instruction okay now consider if you consider this as a this as a 2 then this will be your 3 this will be your 4 and consider uh, there is a one more uh, instruction will be is there just for understanding purpose okay now even if you consider there is a one more instruction like x is equal to y just consider i am just telling you okay and if you consider this as a first then there is a one more statement there like go to statement number 4 okay so this is your second this is your third this is your fourth this is your fifth for example now after the first statement second statement is go to instruction number 4 so where is your instruction number 4 here means after this the control is shifting to the instruction number 4 you are getting my point so after after the first statement second statement getting executed but after the second this third statement is not getting executed you are jumping from the second to the fourth direct now if such kind of jumping is there then we cannot say this there is a sequence of uh, consecutive statements are there because at the second statement there is a jumping there is a jumping from second statement to directly the first statement so if there is a jumping then the sequence of consecutive statement is getting halted here understood and that is the reason we cannot call if there is a such kind of situation then we cannot call this as a sequence of consecutive statement and if there is a jumping in between this statement then we cannot call this as a basic block understood so when we call it as a basic block when there is a continuous statements are there continuous sequence of consecutive statements are there then that one that particular set of consecutive uh, uh, inst instruction or statement is called as what the basic block so same thing also i have written here t1 equal to b plus c t2 equal to t1 plus d and a equal to t2 so these are the continuous statement there is a no jumping in between this statement because after the one second will be going to execute say so after second third will be going to execute if there is a no branching if there is a no jumping in between this instruction or set of statement then that certain sequence of consecutive statement is referred as what the basic block understood so same thing i have mentioned here basic block is a sequence of consecutive statement which are always get executed in the cert, uh, which are always get executed in sequence without any jumping or without any halt or possibility of branching the same thing i have mentioned here when the first instruction is executed means if, if this is instruction get executed then all the instruction in the same basic block will be executed in their sequence so after this this all the remaining statement will be get executed okay in sequence of reference without losing the flow of control of the program so what do you mean by the without losing the flow of control of the program means without changing the uh the particular sequence of execution means after the this instruction next this is going to be executed but after this if the control get shifted to this if the control will get shifted to this then there is a lose there there is a uh, uh, what we can say then flow of control of the program is getting changed understood so here in basic block in basic block there is a uh, no losing the flow of control of the program flow of the control of program is get maintain as instruction get executed one after the other without any halt or without any jumping in between them okay so same thing i have mentioned here the all the instruction in the same basic block will be executed in their sequence of appearance I mean just they are looking you just you are looking at that uh, just 
the way you are looking at this statement here after t1 there is a t2 after t2 there is a, a equal to t2 so the way you are looking at this instruction so the same thing i have mentioned the instruction in the same basic block will be executed in their sequence of appearance means they the way you are uh, the way you are appear the way these instructions are appearing here one after other, another they are going to execute in the same order they are going to execute in the same order without losing the flow of control of the program without changing the control from this first instruction to the third instruction these things will not be happen in the basic block the instruction will get executed in the sequence of appearance without losing the flow of control of the program if such situation is there then that search in then that particular sequence of consecutive statements are called as what the basic block okay so i hope the concept is clear so these are the some of the characteristic of basic blocks are here now what are the characteristic the basic block should not contain any kind of jump statement in between them suppose if there is a go to statement is there after the statement one go to then go to to go to to the instruction number 4 then this is this is kind of jump jump from second to the four direct so if this is if this kind of things is there in your uh, uh, if this kind of uh, statements are there then we cannot call that particular sequence of consecutive statement as a basic block so there should not be any jump uh, there should not be any kind of jump statement okay in the basic block there is a no possibility of branching or getting the halt in middle means instruction will get executed in particular this order only the way uh, we are uh, looking at them the way they are appearing there should not be any halting that uh, or it will uh, halt at this point and from this it will get jump to this point so this kind of thing should not be there in the basic block okay all the statements executed in the same order they appear means the way these instructions are appearing after the one instruction is second third the instruction will get executed in the same order okay and then there should not be any losing the flow of control of the program there should not be losing any flow of control of the program means the control should not get shipped from one this one instruction to directly to the third or if there are the more instruction then jump there should not be a flow of control directly from second to the seventh instruction or sixth instruction like this the instruction must be get executed in the particular consecutive order okay so then that particular uh, sequence of consecutive statement you can call them as a basic block and they are then only they are uh, kept they are only eligible to form the basic block okay so this is all about the basic block and the same thing i have mentioned here suppose for example if you take the expression a equal to b plus c d a equal to b plus c plus d and for this if you uh, uh, evaluate the free address code as intermediate code then uh, you can see all the statements execute in the sequence one after other this all the statements are getting executed one after other same you can write this is also correct free address code this is also correct only here capital t is utilized here small t it doesn't matter okay so all the statements executed in the sequence one after other after this there is this after this there is this okay so that is the reason this particular sequence of consecutive statements this particular sequence of consecutive statements are eligible to form the basic block there is a no jump instruction in between them there is a no halting understood and that is the reason all the statements can execute in the sequence one after other and that is the reason they are capable to form the basic block okay now next uh, we have the uh, now let's take the another example and let's check whether uh, that that particular uh, sequence of statement can we call it as a basic block or not okay now if you see uh, this as a this is the example we have given uh, okay if a is less than b then one else zero such kind of example can be asked in the exam uh, and for that you have to generate the intermediate code as a three address code okay now if this is the expression given if a is less than b then one else zero okay now we have to see whether that particular uh, uh, how to generate the first you have to generate the intermediate code for that first you need to generate the three address code for this uh, given expression now what is the expression if a is less than b then one else zero so we just write first uh, intermediate code instruction here if a is less than b then one else zero 
if a if a is less than b is false then go to where then go to zero then what zero if a is less than b then one else zero but if a is less than b is false then it then zero okay so that is the reason here we write the so from this you have to now if this condition will become false then what and if this condition become true then what if this condition become true then what then one so for that we have written the intermediate code instruction like this by utilizing the temporary variable t1 okay if a is less than b then one so here inter while you are writing the intermediate code you have to write like this if a is less than b go to four four number instruction means this instruction here you have written t1 equal to one that is the then equal to one but if this is if this is false then what zero else zero so here you write here t1 equal to zero okay if false you write t1 equal to zero okay and third instruction also you have written go to five means this actually that is not needed also but it is okay if a is less than b go to four Means if it is true, then go to four. Means else equal to, uh, then equal to one, else zero. If it is false, then t one equal to zero. Understood. So uh, if now this is the uh, intermediate code, you can see. Now can this particular sequence of statements? Can we call this particular sequence of statement as a basic block? No, we cannot call this as a basic block. because the statement do not execute in the sequence one after the another what this this particular sequence of statement are not going to execute one after the other because if a is less than b if this is true then the control will directly shift from first instruction to the fourth instruction understood so what is the basic block saying after this instruction this instruction must be get executed understood after these this must be get executed after this this must be get executed but here if a is less than b if it is if it is true then control is directly jumping into the instruction number 4 understood so there is a no uh, execution is will not happen in the sequence one after the another that is the reason this sequence of statement we cannot call it as a basic block so if a is less than b is false then control will go to the second but from the second then it will go to the third but from the third it will not go to the fourth from the third it will directly go to the fifth means it will come out of the loop if a is less than less than b is uh, if a is less than b is false then this will get execute after this third will get execute okay but from the third now and in the you can see here in the third control is directly shifting to the fifth not to the fourth when when a is less than b is zero understood when a is in b is zero okay a is less than b uh, when the a is less than b condition will become false then directly uh, uh, then then also the uh, execution will not happen in the sequence one after the another so as you can see here the execution is not happening in the sequence as you can see if a is less if a is less than b if it is true then one means if it is if this is true directly control will go to the fourth instruction but if it is false then second then third but again from third directly to the fifth so in the both the cases the there is a execution is not happen in the sequence one after the other so that is the reason we cannot call this particular sequence of statement as a basic block understood so now uh, so let's see the next part now there is a certain algorithm uh, using which uh, we can determine how many basic blocks are there in the particular intermediate code understood and that algorithm is called as a partitioning algorithm okay that algorithm is called as a partitioning algorithm so this is the algorithm uh, using which we can partition the given intermediate code we can partition the given intermediate code into the basic blocks okay 
now there are the certain rules uh, there uh, are there in this algorithm we, uh, we just see that and then we apply that rules to the example and we try to determine the uh, basic block uh, or we try to uh, we try to partition the given intermediate code into the basic block so rule first is what rule first is regarding the determining the leader statement what rule first is what determining the leader statement so we just keep in mind these rules and we apply this to the example so which statements we can call the leader statement so following are the statements uh, that will be part of your intermediate code that statement you can call the leader statement which the first statement always called as a leader statement which statement first statement of your intermediate code that will always called as intermediate uh, that will always called as a leader statement then statement that is a target of the conditional or unconditional go to statement which statement the statement which is target of conditional or unconditional go to statement that statement is again also called as a leader statement and third statement that appear immediately after the go to statement the statement which appear immediately after the go to statement that statement can also be called as a leader statement okay means to determine the leader statement there are the these three uh, things you need to keep in mind first statement of that intermediate code always called as leader statement then target of the conditional and unconditional go to is called as a leader statement and the statement which immediately appear after the go to statement that is also called as a leader statement so there are the two main rules uh, we need to apply uh, in order to partition the given intermediate code into the basic block so this is the first rule first rule is regarding what determining the leader statement and second rule is determining the basic block okay now then which particular sequence of consecutive statement which particular sequence of statement we can call as a basic block so for that also three simple rules are there all the statement that follow the leader including the leader till the next leader appear forms the one basic block so which particular sequence of statement you can call the basic block all the statement that follow the leader statement including the leader statement till the next leader appears till the next leader appears forms one particular basic block means all the statements that follow the leader statement including the leader statement till the next leader statement that will form the one basic block in simple the statement from one leader statement to the next leader statement then this particular whole code is whole sequence is called as what the basic block this whole sequence is called as a basic block that is the same thing i have mentioned here all the statements that follow the leader statement including the leader till the next leader appears forms the one basic block now this will we will apply this rule in the example then you will understand the first statement of the code is called as a first leader okay first statement of the intermediate code is called as a first leader the block containing the first leader is called as a initial block okay the block which is containing the first leader that block is considered as a initial block okay so these uh, rules we have to apply uh, to the example and then we can partition the given intermediate code into the basic block okay so let's take the example and uh, try to apply the partitioning algorithm and try to determining the uh, basic block okay now here the example is given compute the basic blocks for the given three address statements compute the basic blocks for the given three address statements now consider the following source code for the dot product of the two vectors a and b and which is having the length of the 10 now this is the source code statement is given okay these are the source code statements are given of particular higher level language now if only the source code statement is given then first you need to generate the three address code for that as a intermediate code okay sometimes you will directly get the three address code and then you have to apply the partitioning algorithm to this three address code and you have to generate the basic blocks okay now here what is given we have given this uh, source code statements and this source code statement is related with the product of two vectors of a and b of length n now for this given source code we have to generate the three address code and for this uh, source code three address code will be generated like this prod equal to 0 i equal to 1 then t1 equal to 4 into i t2 equal to a of t1 t3 equal to 4 into i t4 equal to b of t3 t5 equal to t2 into t4 t6 equal to product plus t5 product equal to t6 
T7 equal to I plus 1, I equal to T7. And for this last statement, if I is less than 10, go to 3. Or if I is less than 10, go to 3. Understood? So this is the three address code for this particular source code statements. Okay. Now in this sequence of three address code, you can see, first thing we need to apply, now we need to apply the partitioning algorithm here. And the two rules of the partitioning algorithm. Now, what is the first rule is there and what that first rule is saying? First rule is what? Determining the leader statement. Now, which are the leader statement in this sequence of statements? Now, what are the rules for the leader statement? Each first statement of particular intermediate code is called as a leader statement. Okay, means which is the leader statement then? This is the leader statement. So, statement number 01 is the leader statement. This is the leader statement 1. Then second rule is what? Target of conditional and unconditional go-to is also the leader statement. Now, whether is there any go-to statement is there? Yes. Go-to. Go-to where? Go-to 3. Go-to 3. Means this instruction number 3 or statement number 3 is also the another leader statement. So statement number 3 is also the another leader statement. And third rule is what? The instruction which is appear immediately after the go-to. Now, after the go-to, there is a no instruction here. After the go-to, there is no instruction. One means we have only the two leader statement here. How many leader statements are there? Only two leader statement. This is and this is. So we have apply the first rule. And using that first rule, we have determine the leader statement. Okay. Now, second rule is what? Determining the basic block. Now, what is the rule for the basic block? Rule for the basic block is what? The statement, now we can see, just read the rule for the basic block once again. All the statement that follow the leader, including the leader, till the next leader forms the basic block. This is the only rule, only one rule you can keep in mind. All the statement that follow the next leader, follow the leader, including the leader, till the next leader appears from the basic blocks. Okay. Now, which are the leader in our set of instruction? There are the two leader statement, one and three. So all the statement that follow the leader statement. So this is the leader statement. Including this leader statement, all the statement which follow these leader statements are which are the statement following this leader statement. The statements which are following this leader statement is this one. Second. Understood. Okay. Now the uh, all the statement which follow the this leader statement consists of this one which is following this leader statement till the next leader statement appears. Now, this is also the one leader statement. Now, your basic block will start from this instruction and will end at the instruction number second because your basic block will end where it will end when the next leader statement will appear. So, your basic block will end here. So, this will be your basic block one. Okay. And now, your second basic block will be start from here, from the instruction number three, from the statement number three, because this is the leader statement. And all the statement following this leader statement, including this leader statement itself, all the statements are which this. So this all the statements comes under the basic block. So this, this, this sequence of statement will form our basic block two. Understood. So, how many basic blocks are there? Two. This is one and this is second. Understood. So, by using that rule, you can easily determine how which are the leader statement and which are the how many are basic blocks are there. So, for this intermediate code, there are the two leader statement, this one and this one, and there are the two basic blocks, this one and the, this one. Basic block B1 contains the statement one to two. Okay, basic block B2 contain the statement 3 to 12 and starting from this 3 to 12. Why? Why your basic block 1 ended at the this point? Because after the second statement, the next leader statement is starting. Okay, and after the leader statement third, after the leader, after this leader statement, there is a no leader statement further. So that is the reason this whole statement will come under the basic block 2. Okay, I hope you understood how to determine the leader statement and how to determine the 
basic block okay now let's see uh, the next statement uh, next statement here now next statement here is a uh, uh, next point here that we are going to discuss is the flow graph okay now what is the flow graph now you just read here flow graph is a directed graph means in that graph we are making the utilization of arrows okay to show the some kind of direction so flow that is the reason flow graph is called as what the directed graph it contains the flow of control information for the set of basic blocks so flow graph is utilized for what purpose to show the how the control is moving from one particular basic block to the another control how the information is flowing from one particular basic block to the another basic block to show that we are making the utilization of flow graph okay it contains the flow of control information for the set of basic block okay a control flow graph is used to depict or is used to show that how the program control is being passed among the blocks it means how the con program control being moving or how the program control is passing from one basic block to the another basic block okay in order to show that things there is utilization of flow graph structure okay so this flow graph is uh, most uh, useful in the loop optimization that is the next point we are going to see okay so uh, this is the flow graph example now this is the flow graph example for our flow graph for the vector dot product now the previous example that we have seen which consists of the two basic blocks b1 and the b2 now for that for that two basic blocks how how we can draw the flow graph for that for the generated uh, two basic blocks how we can have the flow graph so flow graph will be like this okay so from the basic block b1 to the basic block b2 the arrow is shown because block b1 is the initial block block b1 is the initial block or the initial node and block b2 which appear immediately after the b1 okay the block b2 is immediately appearing after the b1 that is the reason from b1 to b2 the arrow is shown like this why the arrow is shown from b1 to b2 because after the b1 the b2 block is immediately appearing okay so that is the reason the edge is shown from the b1 to b2 okay then the target of jump from last statement of b2 is the first statement of b2 so from here you are going to jump where go to b2 okay from the here the target of jump from the last statement of b2 is what first statement of b2 that is the go to instruction number 3 was there so that is the reason so from b2 to b2 the, there is a edge is shown like this so if such kind of edge is being shown it means the loop the loop is getting detected here okay so you are showing the edge from edge to the same basic block again here if you are showing the edge to the same basic block again here it means loop is getting detected there that is the reason it is utilizing the loop optimization okay so that is the reason arrow is shown from this to this okay b2 is the successor of b1 and b1 is the predecessor of the b2 okay b2 is the successor of b1 that is the reason edge is shown from b1 to the b2 as control is shifting again to the b2 itself that is the reason this arrow is shown like this to the b2 itself okay so how the uh, control is uh, how the uh, control is moving how the program control is passing from one basic block to the another how from b1 it is going to the b2 and again from b2 again it is going to the b2 itself so that particular flow of control can be easily shown using the one particular data structure that is called as a flow graph understood and control is shown with the help of the arrow that is the reason it is called as a directed graph and same thing i have mentioned it contain the flow of control information of the set of basic block how the information is flowing from one basic block to the another basic block again from this b2 to the b2 itself so these all the things can be easily shown using this uh, uh, data structure uh, that is called as a flow graph as a directed graph okay so this concept uh, we are going to uh, need in the further section 
okay that is the reason i have covered this here and you can go through this lecture once again and uh, if you have any doubt you can uh, ask me in the comment section okay so thank you all of you